to order. Sure. Actually, sorry, I, I should uh, drop back just because uh, it is All right, yes. we'll, we'll just have to yes, wait till yes. uh, till you're sent live. Yep, yes. and you are live, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Um, so again, I'll call the meeting to order. It is 10.02. Um, if you can really quickly, Simon, before we do the election of chair and vice chair, this meeting is a little different than than usual. I'm going to be can just kind of go through really quickly um, what, what how this meeting is going to look for folks who are might be watching right now. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I can uh, um, just provide a little bit of context. Um, this will be a live broadcast meeting. Um, we will not be broadcasting the uh, video feed of um, uh, the individual counselors. Uh, instead, we'll, we'll be broadcasting the audio live and the PowerPoint presentations. Uh, there should be a, a slide uh, currently being presented that, uh, that provides that information. Um, uh, Yes, and um, so the audio uh, will remain live and um, uh, as well as the PowerPoint presentation uh, that I believe is, is um, on deck to be to be heard today. Great, thank you. Uh, any any questions from committee members before we move forward at all? Nope. All right, doesn't look like it. So I'll ask for our clerk to take over the meeting and, and run our election of chair and vice chair, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, so we will now be conducting the election of uh, chair and vice chair. Um, I will uh, carry us through the election of the chair and then following uh, the election of chair, the, uh, the new chair will uh, carry us through the election of uh, vice chair. It's exactly the same procedure as uh, uh, the one we just go through uh, for election of chair. Um, so the process is uh, any member uh, of the committee can nominate uh, any other member, including themselves. Uh, it requires a, a seconder to uh, to nominate a, a party and, and following um, uh, nomination. Um, if there is more than one person nominated, if, if there's one person nominated, I should say, uh, we will we'll, uh, uh, conclude that uh, nomination as an appointment. Uh, no uh, uh, vote is necessary. If there is more than uh, one uh, nominated candidate, uh, then I am prepared uh, with uh, links for um, uh, an online uh, voting system uh, and I'll distribute those in, in that instant. Um, that will allow us to um, uh, carry on an election by way of secret ballots. Uh, the uh, majority uh, vote will, will win and uh, that person will be the, uh, the new uh, chair. Um, I should also just mention that uh, the, the nomination process uh, uh, I'll, I'll kind of judge by year as, as we go, um, and I will call three times uh, to close the nomination period before closing it, uh, just to ensure that we, we don't have any further nominations. Uh, does anyone have any questions regarding any of that? In that case, then uh, I uh, can open the uh, nominations for the position of chair. Does anyone have uh, any requested uh, nominations? Uh, I have a nomination. Excellent. Yes, yeah, so I, I wish to nominate uh, Councillor Blackburn for the chair position. Is there a oh. seconder for that? I second it. I'll second it. Nope. That's <laughs> Hearing a uh, nomination uh, of Councillor Blackburn to the uh, chair of the Community Planning Economic Development Standing Committee. Um, are there any further nominations at this time? A second time, are there any further nominations at this time? I have a pre-nomination. <laughs> if I, no. so, so I, I, yeah, sorry. So I remember in, in I'm, I'm happy to support Lisa. I remember Sam, you did, you did show interest, uh, and we didn't chat before the meeting. So I'm just, uh, checking to see if that is oh. interest is still there or, or. I just want to make sure because I know Sam, you did you did you did show interest, and I just don't want to let that go without uh, moving forward. <laughs> uh, if 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 I may, Mr. Clerk. Oh, yep. Uh, I I I am interested, but um, I I also not done my homework pre-meeting. Um, you know, I I'm not sure where we land up with it, where we've landed with executive. 
Um, and, you know, I think it, it is important to have some uh, some gender diversity on the executive committee. So if, if Councillor Blackburn was keen to do this, um, then I would be fine with her being chair if she wanted to go on the executive or I'd be fine with being chair here if she wanted to go to the executive committee from here. Um, I, I would mainly look to Councillor Blackburn, but I, I, I am interested in if, uh, if that's the committee's. Uh, if the committee's Okay. Um, well, I, I'm definitely, uh, uh, thank you very much, by the way, uh, Councillor Lovelace, thank you. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I would be interested in serving on the executive uh, committee, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I didn't really, uh, <laughs> I, I, first of all, are you, uh, Lindell, are you interested in staying on as chair or have you, uh, you sort of, uh, uh, done your time and want to hand the reins over to somebody else. So I, I really enjoy chairing this committee. I know that there's going to be a few other committees, uh, uh, FCM and I'm, our, and I'm chair of uh, Halifax West, and I might okay. take on another chair of something else. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Gotcha. So I, I'm happy to let this one go, sadly, okay. but I think, I think there's lots of great folks here that can carry on the, the work. All right. No. Um, and so with that, I will uh, accept the nomination and uh, uh, I would uh, perhaps uh, go as far as to say, uh, let's uh, nominate Sam as the uh, the vice chair. All right. So I don't I pull away my pre nomination. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Then, uh, well, it was not seconded, so that's that's fine. We we have the one nomination. I'll uh, call uh, a second time uh, for any further nominations at this time. And a third and final time for any further nominations. And this is for the chair position, correct? This is for the uh, chair position. Thank you. Not at all. Uh, that is a third and final time. Uh, may I have a um, uh, motion to uh, close the nomination period? I move to close the nomination period. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Smith. <laughs> And the uh, nomination uh, have closed. Uh, I'm happy to announce that uh, Councillor Blackburn is elected chair of the Community Planning, Economic Development Standing Committee and uh, can carry us through the election of vice chair. All right, thank you very much. And uh, now as uh, the uh, newly elected chair, do I have the ability to nominate somebody for vice chair? I believe so, yeah. All right, then I would like to uh, nominate Sam Austin for the uh, position of uh, vice chair. I'll second that. <laughs> All right, any other nominations from the floor? Any further nominations from the floor? A and third and final, any other nominations from the floor? Seeing no further nominations, no vote is required. Uh, Councillor Sam Austin is the vice chair of the Community Planning and Economic Development Standing Committee. Thank you. Hey, can I make a uh, motion to uh, close the uh, the nomination, if that's all right? Just a minute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> motion to. Oh, sorry. After you do the three, ask three times, then close. Okay, sorry. No uh, uh, so, motion to close the uh, the nominations for vice chair. I'll move that, Miss Chair. All right. Move. Do we have a seconder? Second. We have a mover and a seconder. Nominations are then closed and then I think with no vote required, we can now officially declare that uh, Councillor Sam Austin will be vice chair of CPED for the next uh, year, I guess, <laughs> however long the term lasts. One year. All right. Beautiful. Thank you very, very much. OK, so uh, Moving along to uh, item two on the agenda, the approval of minutes from September the 28th. Um, now this one uh, be a bit tricky because uh, it can only be moved by somebody who was in attendance at that move at that uh, meeting. So uh, if we can have a mover to approve the minutes as presented. I'll move, I'll move that, Mr. Chair. I believe I was here. <laughs> 
I know yes. I was on the committee. As far as I recall, I was here. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I, I remember seeing your name in the minutes. So uh, we have uh, a mover, Councillor Austin, a seconder. I'll second Councillor Smith. Councillor Smith seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion carried. The minutes have been approved. Uh, approval of the order of business and approval of additions and deletions. Uh, Mr. Clerk, do we have anything to uh, add or subtract from today's agenda? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we do not have uh, any uh, requests for additions or deletions to the clerk's office as of this time. All right, perfect. So uh, having none, uh, looking for a motion to approve the order of business as presented. So moved. So moved by Councillor Lovelace. Do we have a seconder? Seconded, Councillor Purdy. Yeah, seconded by Councillor Purdy. Thank you very much. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carried. Uh, business arising out of the minutes. We have none. Uh, call for declaration of conflict of interest. I'll give you a moment. And seeing none. Moving on to number six, motions of re uh, reconsideration. We have none. Motions of rescission, there are none. Considerations of deferred business, there are none. And there are no notices of tabled matters. Uh, moving on to item 10, correspondence, petitions, and delegations. Uh, do we have any cor correspondence, Mr. Clerk? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the clerk's office has received uh, uh, no correspondence at this time, uh, general in nature, uh, uh, other than the correspondence which relates to the uh, presentation. All right, excellent. Uh, so uh, petitions, do any members of the committee have petitions to present today? All right, and seeing none, at 10.3, we have presentations and 10.3.1. Uh, very pleased to have Nancy Noble, who is the director and CEO of the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, joining us today with a presentation on the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, the Halifax Waterfront Arts District. Nancy, are you there? Nancy Noble, are you with us? You might have to hit star six to unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? I absolutely can. Nancy, hello, okay. welcome. <laughs> Hi, thanks. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's it's such an odd way to do this, to not be able to see any of you. And um, <laughs> but we'll 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 do the best we can as we all have during these many months of of, of change in our world. Um, anyway, it's really great to be here. I appreciate um, the time that you're taking to listen to my presentation. And congratulations, by the way, to all of you for your election or re-election um, to council. And I look forward to working with all of you in the next uh, three years. Um, so we'll move to the next slide, I think. So um, I think probably many of you know uh, a little bit about what's happening at the Art Gallery. It's been going on for many years. But last um, April, April 2019, uh, the Premier and, and the Premier McNeil and the Honourable uh, Bernadette Jordan announced both provincial and federal funding uh, for the development of, of a new art gallery on the Halifax waterfront. And so we've been moving rapidly uh, through a process, which I'm going to talk about um, in a moment, uh, to make that a reality. And I'll talk about the funding that both of those um, levels of government have um, given to us as well as we work our way through this. At the Art Gallery, though, we believe that all great cities are grounded by great galleries. And so we want to make, we want to be part of making Halifax and Nova Scotia a place where art matters. So the next slide, please. So I'm just going to step back a little bit. Prior to the announcement, um, the AGNS with its partners spent many months um, in 2018 and leading up to that announcement in 2019 engaging with Nova Scotians to reimagine what it means to be an art gallery in this day and age and a new facility that will allow us to really set a course that matches the provinces, the city's diversity and ambition. The result is that the art gallery has created um, a new vision and mission, which uh, much of the work that we're doing now is going to be based on. Next slide, please. So our new vision is that the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia be an inclusive public gathering place that connects people with art to inspire new ways of thinking. Next. 
And we have a bold mission. We really want to um, focus more on in engaging contemporary art, both uh, local, regional, and from around the world. But we're going to, our collection is both historic and contemporary. We'll embrace the tradition of that and the past by applying contemporary lenses um, to relevant issues and, and, and to challenge perspectives about things going on around us now. Next slide. So as part of our re-envisioning what the art gallery's approach would be, we um, created four belief pillars. We want to be welcoming and accessible and as accessible as we possibly can be to all people. As I said before, we're going to focus on contemporary art, but with that historic lens to ground it. We really want the art gallery to a be a place of conversation, to challenge people to, to talk about and think about the things that are going on around them through an, a visual arts lens, because artists are great at that, uh, provoking us to think differently. And lastly, our last belief, belief pillar is that we're ambitious. We have ambitions both for the city we're in, for the art gallery, and for the province, and we want um, to be a part of that ambition to make this a really great place to live. Next slide, please. So over the last several months, we've undertaken an international um, design competition, and it was, um, I think we, we had 46 applicants um, from around the world, and we got that down, we whittled that down to eight, and then COVID hit, and we had to move everything online. I'm not sure there's ever been an international design competition done online, but we now, now know how to do it and have done it quite successfully. Um, the reason, you know, design competitions aren't really that normal um, in Nova Scotia, but we really thought that it was the best way to get the best design. Um, and there was a great article in the Globe and Mail recently by the architecture critic, critic who stated it best, I think, when he said, how do you design a magical place? You start with ideas and choose the best one. The Art Gallery of Nova Scotia in Halifax is proving that right now with its design competition for a new waterfront building. So, um, I think most of you will know that the winning design is design team is KPMB, which is a Toronto-based architecture firm with Omar Gandhi Architect. Omar is um, based here and in Toronto, here mostly right now. Jordan Bennett Studio, Elder Lorraine Whitman, Public Work and TransSolar. So we have hired this team and you can see the this beautiful design of this building. Um, when you, I was on the jury that made the selection. There were seven people who made a selection of the final uh, three. It was a really difficult selection. Um, but I just want to uh, be clear that this is a concept. It is the beginning of the design process, not the end. I'll talk a bit about that in a minute. So next slide, please. This is a site overview of the of the design that KPMB and Omar Hamf and et al. have done. Um, the design brief is what really um, uh, spoke to the that we we created a design brief that the art all the architectural teams had to abide by, um, and and they only really had five weeks to do it, so it wasn't a, a very long time, but um, we were really interested in making sure that we have um, a great site plan as well because the inside and the outside we want to be porous and we want people to be able to come into the art gallery, go out and be in it at an event. We want to make sure there's enough event space around the gallery um, that we can partner with with organizations like Jazz and others to really bring the site alive. And the, the Art Gallery is really the beginning of an arts district. It will be the anchor, but that arts district, we, we really hope will evolve over time and we see events as a big part of that. It was also really important to make sure that the design um, linked back to the city, not just to the water, but to the city as well, and its positioning on lower water and the Salter Block. Are, um, we want activation on all sides of the building and we want it all all times of year. And those are things that are important to us as we move forward in refining this design. Next slide, please. This is just um, an interior shot. We have about 140,000 square feet and we want it to provide gathering places, permanent and temporary galleries, a cafe, a shop, places where people can really come together both before a paywall and after a paywall to see and to have art everywhere. That's really, really important to us. And um, the, the, this architectural team really is interested in, in the integration of local materials, and you'll see a lot of wood here. And that was, we were really adamant in the design brief that we wanted it to be of Nova Scotia and of Halifax and reflect the history and the culture of the place. And I think it's done that very well. 
Next slide. So it's 100, we have $130 million to build the building. Uh, construction is about 97, uh, the capital costs about 30 million and the capital expenses like moving about 3 million. However, uh, so that is divide. This is the announcement that was made by the premier and the um, and the federal government. The the province is giving 70 um, million to the art gallery for the buildings. The federal government is giving 30 million, and we're required to raise 30 million for the bricks and mortar. Next slide, please. So, but our actual capital campaign will be $40 million because we want to create a $10 million for programs um, sustainability for the long-term health of the art gallery. And when we uh, made the announcement of the winner, we also made the announcement the SOBI uh, foundations, two foundations from capital campaign, which will launch at the beginning of next year. Next slide. So I just wanted to bring this back to aligning with council priorities. Um, I know that in November you outlined four proposed priorities for which three I think we really fit into, a prosperous economy, a healthy community, economic development and tourism, and we are working with Destination Halifax and other tourism organizations to make sure that that will be an integral part of it. Um, we're, we also want to be an irresistible destination for all the cultural explorers who we hope post-COVID will come back to our, our boardwalk. Um, and we will be extending our programming, our exhibitions and our collections and use them as a, as a art as a catalyst to enhance diversity and inclusiveness, to challenge those perspectives and support lifelong learning in our community and beyond. But we also want to contribute to the quality of life of our community. And we're hoping that our approach to, um, to climate change and particularly sea level rise and storm surge will provide leadership to the development of all kinds of buildings on the waterfront, not just in Halifax, but in Nova Scotia as well. Next slide, please. So the impacts. It will create 1,100 construction jobs. There will be additional permanent jobs at the gallery. How many, we're not quite sure, but we also see a lot of jobs being created through uh, partnerships with other artists, partners, performers, um, other kind of cultural and arts sector employees. We see about 180% growth in our visitation, which will um, we contribute greatly to the increased tourism on the waterfront. Um, and as I said, we've had a voice in the Halifax Regional Integrated Tourism Master Plan, which is not out yet, but will be released early next year. And we're in discussions with them because we believe that the gallery will be a huge attraction on the waterfront. And we also hope to have an impact through the creative economy by employing more artists um, in the work that we show, by the commercialization of the site um, with arts and cultural based um, uh, businesses and partnerships with post-secondary institutions and others to really uh, bolster the creative economy and its businesses. Next slide, please. So our next steps, we're going to launch the capital campaign early in the new year. We're going, um, we're right now developing public, um, a design for public engagement, which will be launched in January um, and will be very fulsome both in the city and around the province about the design and what people want to see in this in not just the building but the site itself. Construction will start next fall. We see substantive completion by the fall of 2024 and move in that fall winter for a spring opening in 2025. Next slide please. So I know that you're not the committee I ask for uh, for investment from, but I think your recommendation will go a long way. We would like the, the HRM to invest $7 million in the project over five years or $1.4 um, million per year. Um, the city has, um, has supported the gallery in the past in past capital campaigns, and we hope that you'll come back and that together we can create a really vibrant and new and accessible home for art in our community and a district that will support other artistic expressions. Next slide please. So that's it for my formal presentation but I'm happy to take questions. All right, uh, thank you very much and uh, um, my apologies for uh, to uh, any of the, uh, the media listening in. I don't know if I properly uh, introduced. This is Nancy Noble, N-O-B-L-B, -B, Director and CEO of the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. Uh, anybody uh, on the committee with uh, questions? 
Oh, uh, Councillor Lovelace, you have a question. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Noble, for this presentation. Um, I can uh, just speak to uh, Mr. Gandhi's work in the Peggy's Cove um, renovation and uh, revitalization of that, uh, you know, national tourism icon. And we're thrilled uh, with the work that he's done there. So really, really excited um, to see this project uh, come to fruition. I just have a question about um, the creative industry and the involvement of the local community within uh, this project, but also more importantly, I guess the, uh, uh, you know, you touched on a little bit about the presentation uh, and uh, promotion of our local uh, creative industry. They've been hit really hard by COVID um, and we know that they've struggled. NASCAD has struggled, um, you know, in, in the past few years in particular. So I'm just wondering what uh, sort of strategic initiatives will you have in place to uh, advance the create the local creative economy and, and working with NASCAD and working with local uh, producers? So I don't I don't have a specific answer for you, but we're absolutely committed to doing that. Um, we work with a lot of these people already where we are now. Certainly NASCAD. Um, we have all kinds of partnerships with NASCAD in the delivery of programs, and um, we do joint we did a joint exhibition with them last year, and we rely on their faculty heavily um, because of their knowledge. And of course, we can't have curators with knowledge in everything. But I think what this does for what this this new, not just the new building, but the entire site, and we hope the entire arts district will do, will enable us to really solidify partnerships with creative industries so that we can support each other. I mean, this has been a, you know, this has been a very hard time for the art gallery. We're shuttered again, as we were for many, many months, spring to summer. Um, so we really understand the kind of, um, you know, the difficulties everyone is feeling right now. But we are strong believers and always have been. It's not new for us. But I think it, we have a new opportunity that partnership and collaboration is going to help everyone a lot more. So through our engagement, it will be very public, our engagement, and broad. But we will be targeting specific areas that we as an art gallery and people we want to talk to uh, to find out how we can work together to really first of all, build this arts district, but also we want to change the way we do things. We don't want the same art gallery to, to land in 2025 as we have now. And I don't just mean the building, I mean how we do things and the way that we partner with community and the way that we support all of the arts, not just visual arts. I mean, visual arts are our anchor, absolutely, but we see lots of ways we can work with the music industry, with others to create great new festivals, um, you know, and events on the site and elsewhere. So I think the, the next six months will tell us a lot more. I'm not trying to be evasive. I just don't have a specific answer, except that we are absolutely committed to it. Yeah, that, that's really exciting because thinking about uh, the collision space that can be created, uh, yeah. you know, this space, but also kind of in the broader maritime community where, you know, AGNS really is the leader uh, for our, our maritime artists, um, as well as the, the biggest uh, opportunity to do that kind of cross-cultural and cross-industry um, collision uh, where the minds, the, mi the creative minds meet. So thank you, I appreciate that. You're welcome. Uh, all right, thank you so much, Councillor Lovelace. Uh, Councillor Cuddle. Oh, see, thank you so much for the presentation. I um, have to say this is a you know very exciting project. Um, I love the design and um, and it's all great. I get my question is around kind of site location, design, and sea level rise. And um, you know we know from sea level rise scenario mapping that this area of Halifax is going to potentially be impacted in a, in a major way. Has any of that been considered in the site location or design? Absolutely, in the design. And and um, we really do see we're going to be leaders in this. Um, Transolar is the engineering company, but there are a lot of, they've brought, the team has brought a lot of expertise on on sea level rise and storm surge. Those are the two main things when you're as close to the water as this is going to be. Um, and I'm, I, I confess I'm not an expert on this, but there is great expertise on the team and they're going to build it up and we're going to make sure that um, 
uh, I mean, we're, we're not at, we're at, we're anticipating building this for a hundred years of sea level rise. So that's pretty significant. Um, they're going to use initiatives like, um, bringing back local natural vegetation, kind of reclaiming the waterfront. I mean, in many ways, the waterfront in Halifax is cut off by a boardwalk and kind of reintegrating into that to help with things like natural um, approaches to storm surge and things like that. So again, I, I'm not an engineer, but it's absolutely being considered. And in our design brief, it was a very important component of, of how we evaluated the teams, whether or not they brought creative um, uh, approaches and so and and this team did I mean lots of the teams did to be honest and lots of work is going on globally and they're tapped into that and looking at it um, uh, very closely to see how we can do the best job for the art gallery we also will have a main floor that will not have exhibitions on it so art won't I mean if in the eventuality it ever flooded and of course that's not what we hope for but if it ever did we would be protecting the art so it's been given a lot of consideration and and we'll have a lot more details come out as we work through it with um, with this very highly specialized team. Okay, because I am looking at um, the sea level rise mapping right now that shows, mm -hmm. you know, the potential scenario of this entire area being underwater. And you know, part of me wishes we could just take this amazing, wonderful building and move it somewhere where, you know, it could exist not just for a hundred years, but for you know, three hundred years. Um, yeah. Or more, you know, because it is, it is, it is a wonderful building, and um, you know, naturalizing the landscape is key to mitigating sea level rise, and in particular, you know, I, cities and towns are softening their water's edge, not not hardening it. So, mm -hmm. um, I think we really, you know, this is a massive investment in our public infrastructure. Um, I am 100% behind the idea of having a, you know, world-class um, art gallery here in Nova Scotia, here in Halifax. Uh, but this is, um, you know, it is it is a concern that I think we really need to take take seriously here. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think we do need to take it seriously. And I, I and you know, the the reason for choosing the waterfront is manyfold. For us, it's um, you know, very specifically for the art gallery. It's an operational thing. We we will be able to afford to operate because of the location and the and the kind of tourism numbers you get on the boardwalk. And and so we really do hope that our greatest wish is that we can um, use this as a way to find new ways to innovate. Um, I mean, we're a maritime province. We have a lot of waterfront. We have a lot of, we have a lot of built infrastructure on waterfront. And I mean, the building is going to be set back from the actual rate right at the front of the water, which will be more open space. That was purposeful as well. But we really do hope that this can provide some leadership um, and some innovation to um, building on, um, on the sea, um, which, you know, I mean, we know from the from the building right behind us, the um, um, Queen's Mark, which is a huge, huge investment, which is again right on the ocean, that that we're going to have to find ways to kind of mitigate these things. So, um, you know, sites were other sites were looked at pre my time, but it was really decided, I think, by the board and others that it it needed to be central in the city. And because that waterfront is so enjoyed by tourism and the port, and I mean, we hope that will come back. That that really is going to help us to create an operational. Um, structure that that is financially viable to be honest if we I mean you could make it financially viable other places as well um, too but for whatever reason the decision was made really pre my time that that would be the site mm -hmm. so I think we do have to take it very seriously and I do think the team um, is prepared to do that you know whether it'll it'll be more than a hundred years most buildings aren't built for more than a hundred years nowadays but I understand what that you know we don't want to think about it only being a hundred years I prefer 300 as well but we're not we're not shirking the responsibility we're really looking at it seriously all right thank you You're welcome. thank you very much uh, Councillor Cuddle uh, Councillor Austin uh, thank you Mr. Chair uh, so I mean and <laughs> Uh, I, I, I followed some of this um, process as it was unfolding in public and, uh, you know, just uh, I'm delighted with the design that was chosen, right? It was it was my favorite of the three. So uh, I think I think the, the team has done a good job. The, the, the question I have 
is uh, one of procedure. Uh, we've ta we've talked about this one um, in in the past here at the committee, and it has been referenced at council uh, during budget times as a, as a, a spending pressure. I think is what they identified it as. I'm, I'm just curious as to what it looks like from here to actually have this the request considered at council. Um, is that audit and finance, or is it already basically uh, set set to move based on the past presentation? Um, well, no. My understanding was that we would because COVID hit. So I made an ask, and I did this a similar presentation um, to audit and finance uh, just before COVID hit, actually. And then COVID hit, and then an election happened, and so I um, we were instructed to come back to your committee and then take it to finance and audit committee for, okay, for so the actual ask. So that act that that process is mapped out so that council can have a proper consideration of it. Yes, and we'll follow whatever process you ask us to. Okay, great. I uh, just wanted to confirm how that how that would be moving forward. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, that was my question too. So there's to confirm there's no ask of us. We we have no motions to move here today. This is just for information purposes only. Yes. All right, beautiful. Uh, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thank you for the presentation. Really, really quickly, so some of the, the comments that were made uh, earlier from members, I, I, I agree with, so I won't harp on it, other than, you know, I think the that you chose a dream design team uh, for this, uh, you know, not mentioning all the local folks involved and in the fact that we do have Mi'kmaq history in, in culture design that's and built in it but also having local designers as well i think is a is a great thing so you know big shout out for for the choice there and i think not only was it great for the our local um uh aspect of of architecture and, and design and engineering but you know also just for the nova scotia to, to see that we have amazing talent here that can that can build you know world class building so that's great really really quickly if you could run through the 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 funding uh, contributions again uh, so the federal government was was is committed to what it uh, thirty million okay seventy million from the province. Mm -hmm. Now the province is actually giving it an additional ten for the site, but that's um, that's for Develop Nova Scotia because this is a partnership with Develop Nova Scotia because it's on the waterfront. Um, so seventy million for the bricks and mortar of the buildings uh, from the provincial government, thirty from the federal government, and we want to raise forty more, thirty for bricks and mortar, and ten for uh, to create a sustainable programming fund so that we will be sustainable uh, in the future. And you already have 10 of that from Sobe yes. Foundation? We do. Okay. So then, um, yeah, we, they, they, they're, they're great. They're great folks and hey Rob uh, in the picture. Uh, what, what about thinking of going forward for the private sector? Obviously we're in a, a very, a very interesting time to say the least when it comes to, to COVID and, and what that means for many folks' finances. I know even for us, going into budget, we're going to have a difficult budget year to deal with. So yeah. how do you envision fundraising looking in the next number of years? Um, what we've, uh, so we have a professional fundraiser on staff, our director of development, who has a great deal of experience with capital campaigns and is relatively new to the role. She came in February. Um, and COVID has changed things. But what has mostly changed is how long it takes for people to give you the money, not the giving itself. Right. Um, that's, what, what, that's what we're finding. It's, it's over a longer period of time. And so we'll have to work um, on how we're going to finance that with the provincial. I mean, this is a provincial government project, essentially, because we're a crown corporation of the province. So we'll be working with them to figure that out. Um, we're really quite confident that, um, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be difficult. It always is. It's a lot of money. $40 million is a lot of money. We have 10. Um, we're just putting our campaign council together, um, which will be announced um, in the coming weeks. And, I, and we're really confident that there's enough um, interest and belief in the long term of this project and its impact on the city and the province and the region that, that we're going to be able to raise the money. 
it won't be easy. Um, it's it is a different world in COVID. We hope we'll we'll come out of COVID and be able to <laughs> to do some things in person. Um, but we've had quite a bit of uh, what they call. I mean, you always do this work prior to actually launching a capital campaign, the sort of soft, uh, com the, the behind the scenes conversations. And we've had a lot of those already and it's been very positive and it hasn't really changed uh, with COVID. I think it will be, it's always that last 10 million that's the hardest or the last bit of it that's the hardest. And I think that may take longer. So we're looking at how that's going to impact us. Gotcha. And and then, sorry, the HRM was 7. Point... 7 million over five years. Okay. Seven over five, over five, and that's one point four every year ago. Yeah, 1.4. yeah. Uh, okay, so um, that, thank you for that. In terms of the old location, what is the? And maybe this is this hasn't been worked out. But what happens with the old location? Yeah, it, was, it hasn't been worked out, and it's a provincial okay. decision because they right. they own. We're kind of in one and a half buildings, <laughs> so okay. uh, the building that's furthest. Um, North. I'm not sure what's going to happen with it. The provincial building that I'm in already has office buildings uh, um, above us, so I think that'll just be assumed by them. But it's it's not clear yet. Right. So so you know, best case scenario for you that HRM supports this. Uh, you, you're your full ask, and you know you continue with your with your campaign to to raise the rest. And you know, worst case scenario for HRM says no. How does that affect moving forward? For you, well, we'll just have to raise more from uh, right. from the private sector. Yep. That's okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that's easy. That was easy. Easy answer. Uh, well, you know, thank <laughs> you for for the presentation. I know there's a lot more discussion to be had as we move forward. And you said even the design itself is conceptual, and and so you'll be going back. Well, I, I should say back. Will you be going out to to the community to kind of get feedback? Like, how do you envision the next yeah. phase of? Okay, gotcha. So we're we're planning that right now. How we're actually going to do that in a time of COVID, right. um, particularly for people who don't have great internet access around the province. But yes, it will be very robust our public engagement it, over the next, starting in January for at least two months. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. expect in January to to see some some public campaign to get feedback. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And then there will be, you know, we're we're already working with the Indigenous community and others, and th there's just going to be all kinds of um, input into this. And the design will change. I mean, yeah, you know, not probably fundamentally, but the design will change because we need it to work uh, for the community and for as an art gallery. I mean, there's even issues with it as an art gallery. So we're working mm -hmm. with the teams already. I mean, it is a concept, and it's a beautiful concept, and uh, we're really confident we'll be able to get the right kind of building for everyone. Right, and you know the last last comment because you you mentioned that like the working with the the indigenous community, which is very important. Also, I I, I hope and I and I, I suspect that that also includes um, other communities here Absolutely. within the Nova Scotia historic communities as well. Yes, um, yes, the African Nova Scotia community, the Acadian. Yeah, we're right. we've we have a very robust because we did quite a bit of public engagement prior to all of this. We have a very robust kind of contact list and we'll be expanding that as well. And and also not just engaging them on the design but also the programming and what happens in the building and how we can partner to work together to really make this place accessible because it art galleries are have not been accessible to people and uh, we want to break down those barriers whether it's economic or people don't see themselves in the building or the art. Uh, we really want to break those down and you, we can do that by working with community. Right, and you and you 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 said something. I, I I wish I could quote you direct, but you mentioned that you don't want to have the same art gallery land on the waterfront, which to me no. is important. Yeah, no, I mean our new vision and mission and belief pillars are part of that. We really believe that we want to create something different. I mean, it's a great opportunity to create something different and really push the boundaries of what an art gallery can mean and be in a community. But community needs to inform that, and they have to some degree, but they're going to have an opportunity to do it again. Great. Okay, well, well, thank you so much. That's it for me, Chair, and, and uh, I'm not sure if anyone else has any questions, but thank you. That's it for me. All right, thank you. Um, and if I could just uh, quickly uh, just pile on to what uh, Lindell said. Uh, I mean, it's it, it's interesting. It, it sounds to me like what you folks are envisioning with the art gallery is a similar process to what we went through when we envisioned uh, what the central library 
could be like. I mean, that reinvented what libraries are all about. And so we've we've seen success and uh, suspect that uh, you will find the you know similar success in in your uh, you know in in your desire to uh, be a more welcoming space. So uh, I appreciate the uh, uh, appreciate the uh, the presentation. I don't see any other uh, names on the list. I think we've got all the questions. So uh, with that, we will uh, thank you once again, Nancy, for the uh, the presentation, and uh, very much looking forward to uh, seeing the next steps and progressing with this uh, with this project together. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. Thank Bye. you. Bye now. Bye bye. All right, uh, moving along to uh, item number 11, information items brought forward. We have none. Uh, 12 reports, staff reports, 12.1.1, review of report requests. So this is uh, this was an opportunity to look at all of the outstanding reports uh, that uh, staff reports that were requested. Uh, and just uh, whether or not you want to continue with those reports. And uh, so I will, let's see, uh, Councillor Austin, you have a question. And thank you, Ms. Chair. Um, and I see that Denise uh, Schofield is logged in. I'm just wondering about the, I mean, I, I think all the reports we have are, are fine um, to continue. The one that I just have a question on would be the hotel association one because obviously um, when they came in and made their presentation for the new councillors, the idea is that um, we would share 50-50 uh, an increase in the hotel levy to pay for more marketing. Um, obviously COVID has punched some giant holes in that and now is probably not the time that anyone wants to take on additional marketing levies. So I'm just wondering for uh, from a staff perspective, whether or not um, we should leave that on the list as kind of in deep hibernation or whether it should be taken off. Okay, uh, Denise Schofield, you uh, you with us? I am, Madam Chair, hey. and apologies for being delayed getting on the meeting. I was having some technical oh. uh, teams issues. No uh, worries. <laughs> so absolutely, through you, Madam Chair, to the Councillor. I, I would leave the report on. We are doing an, a lot of behind the scenes work on this report, Councillor in terms of both the tourism master plan that council approved with discover halifax that is that it will inform this report that's coming back to council or, um, early in the first quarter of 21 and we're also still in conversations on this particular topic and you're absolutely right with covid the hotel or hotel levy has been significantly impacted but the conversations are still going for you know, the recovery period as well. Council has also asked for a report on requesting that the province through the next um, session of the legislature consider removing the cap that's currently on the, the hotel levy. So all of those pieces are all kind of part of this work. We're certainly able to leave, you know, I, I guess it's, it's entirely up to council. We, we're coming back with this work anyway you could remove the report, but we're just going to come back with it anyway, so it's probably fine to leave it on. Um, and then that way, while it's while it's definitely an older report, all of these other pieces of work that we're doing will all intertwine with it. OK, sounds good to me. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Councillor Austin. Councillor Lovelace. Uh, that actually was my question um, oh, okay. regarding uh, the, uh, tourism and hotels, but my other question is about uh, bylaw N200 and um, seeing the date, uh, you know, of of that uh, report request. I'm just wondering um, if there are uh, other issues holding that up, or if it's um, it's still relevant or needs to be adjusted. That report request, Madam Chair, I I can address that one as well. That sure. That report, that is a planning and development report. They are working on those amendments, Councillor. Um, there was some other work that was related to that particular bylaw that has been moving through. So certainly we can get you more detailed answer from, from planning development, but uh, all, all of the reports that are on here for from planning and development are all in, in flight. So I wouldn't recommend that the committee remove those. Oh yes, no, I don't think I'd want to remove it. I actually would like to move it uh, faster. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, sorry. Yeah, so the uh, 
yeah, the timeline that's shown on here is, is that uh, you know we we would you know that's that's the time that leaves that stays on there. I will certainly uh, mention that to the executive director of planning development and perhaps get her to give you a bit of a brief update on when that report could be expected. Oh, that would be great because the complaints that uh, that come in and with the um, increase in uh, uh, residential development, especially with um, the pounding of the rock, <laughs> you know, that'd be great. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Councillor Lovely. So now um, seeing no other speakers on the board, it appears that uh, uh, the committee wants all of these uh, report requests to move forward. So just looking to the uh, clerk's office, does this change the motion at all, Mr. Clerk? Uh, no, uh, it would be the same motion. We'll just uh, uh, add a note as we've done for other um, uh, meetings where this has happened. We just say the standing committee did not bring any items forward to be withdrawn. OK, perfect. So then uh, in that case, uh, looking for somebody to uh, move the motion at 12.1.1. OK, I'll move the motion. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, can you uh, read it into the uh, the record, Councillor Lovelace? Oh, sorry about that. Oh, um, that's okay. I actually don't know that I have it in. Oh, yes, I do have it in front of me. Sorry, that the Community Planning and Economic Development Standing Committee um, accept the attached list of report requests as presented in attachment one of the staff report dated October 26, 2020, and uh, not withdraw any items. I second that. All right, Patty. seconded by Councillor Cuddle. Thank you very much. Uh, any uh, any further debate on that? All right, seeing none, uh, we just uh, vote. Uh, do we go uh, round table vote for this, uh, Mr. Clerk, or is this just show of hands? Oh, no, we can do uh, a show of hands. That would be fine. Perfect. All right, the uh, motion is on the floor with a mover and a seconder. No further debate has been requested. So uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? There we go. OK, motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, item 12.1.2, the proposed uh, 2021 Community Planning and Economic Development Standing Committee meeting schedule. Uh, if uh, that schedule works for everybody, I'll uh, seek a motion right now to uh, accept or approve the proposed meeting schedule as presented. I can Anybody? Make a sure. Um, is this chair? Um, Councilor Purdy? Yes. Excellent. Go ahead. I, must, I move that the Community Planning and Economic Development Standing Committee approve the proposed 2021 meeting schedule as outlined in Attachment 1, a staff report dated December 3rd, 2020. All right. And a seconder. I'll second that. All right, seconded by Councillor Purdy and no Finnegan, you cannot second. Uh, all those in favor? I think that was seconded by Councillor Cuddle. I think oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, just OK. Councillor Cuddle was seconder. Thank you very much. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Excellent, motion carried. Uh, 12.1.3, Councillor appointments to boards and committees. So. Uh, Mr. Clerk, you might have to help me with this one. So we need one member that will attend to become member of the Executive Standing Committee uh, and two members who will serve on the Heritage Advisory Committee. Uh, yes, I believe that's right. Uh, I note um, uh, Phoebe Rye is here as well, our uh, uh, Deputy Municipal Clerk, who may be able to uh, assist us through the process in uh, detail as well. Um, what I would recommend is, uh, if possible, uh, we can uh, just put the motion on the floor uh, to begin with, and then uh, we will go through the uh, the nominations for um, each of those uh, committees uh, individually. Uh, this will be very similar to uh, the, uh, the election of chair and vice chair in terms of uh, process. Um, uh, yeah, uh, does All anyone right. have any questions or? Uh... Excellent. No, I think uh, I think we're good. I'll move to uh, Councillor Austin has uh, a nomination and perhaps. Uh, um, well, I guess we'll get the names first and then we'll put the motion on the floor. Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a nomination and actually a question as well. Uh, just uh, I'll do the question first. Um, 
for the Heritage Advisory Committee, uh, I've been serving on it so far, um, but Councillor Hensby has been the other representative on it. Did the terms of reference, uh, are we required to nominate from this committee uh, or is it just um, that he was on CPED prior? Madam Chair, I can answer that. Sure, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, to the committee. Uh, Phoebe Wright, Deputy Municipal Clerk. Um, for the Heritage Advisory Committee, the terms of reference do not set out that it is required to be somebody from uh, Community Planning and Economic Development Standing Committee. This is the body that does the nominations, but the uh, the uh, the councillor to to be appointed does not need to be a member of the committee. Um, so on the table that you've been provided. Um, there's a list of councillors that expressed interest in the committee. Not all of those are are, are councillors that are on CPED, but any of them uh, would be eligible for appointment. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, to, I'll, I'll move the executive one first and we can have some discussion about the heritage one since there's uh, several people have all indicated interest. Um, okay. I would like to nominate um, our chair, uh, Councillor Blackburn, to serve on executive. Um, generally, our tradition has been that the chairs of the committee, if they want, if they're interested, to serve on executive. And uh, I think uh, Councillor Blackburn would be a good would be a good fit, especially in the interest of making sure that um, it's not <laughs> given the gender imbalance that was the old council that our executive committee doesn't end up with just a bunch of uh, white men. <laughs> I'll, I'll, second, I'll second that and also second it because I think um, being the previous deputy mayor, um, you know, your uh, the continuity uh, within that executive committee, I think uh, you will have you'll bring a lot of value. Um, and so I will second that. Uh, thank you, Councillor Austin. All thank right. You, uh, beautiful. So we have a, a we have a nomination. We have a mover and a seconder and uh, uh, as the uh, the member in question, I, I accept that appointment. Uh, are there any further nominations to uh, executive standing committee? Any further nominations to executive standing committee? Any further nominations to executive standing committee? All right, seeing no further nominations, uh, it looks like uh, I will be sitting on the Executive Standing Committee. Thank you very much. Uh, I am looking forward to uh, continuing on that uh, committee, so appreciate that. Um, I'm just wondering, do we need to actually close the nomination for that position or do we just close all nominations at the end? That is a very good question. Mr. Clerk, can you uh, walk me through that? Uh, it's been my practice with um, uh, past committees to uh, close each no each nomination separately. All right then. So I'll look for a motion to close nominations. So I'll move that motion to close nominations for the executive uh, committee. All right. Nominations and a seconder. Second, Councillor Austin. Beautiful. And so uh, with that, nominations are closed, and it looks like uh, once again I will be on the executive standing committee until November of 2022. Excellent. Um, all right, uh, Councillor Lovelace, you have a nomination. I wish to nominate uh, Councillor Stoddart for a position on the Heritage Advisory Committee. As a as a past chair of that committee, I feel that uh, the councillor will bring um, uh, a level of um, you know experience uh, to that committee. All right. Uh, now, is Councillor Stoddart with us this morning? Uh, no, but she had indicated that she was interested in that position uh, based on the, the matrix, the chart that we have here in front of us and gotcha. her indication that she wanted to um, uh, join that committee again. Oh, OK. And is she normally a member? Is she a member of this committee, but just is not in attendance today? No, so this is for the Heritage Advisory Committee. Um, and so the, the Heritage Advisory Committee members do not need to be a member of this standing committee. Oh, OK, I thought they did. No, nope, that's perfect. All right, we have a nomination for uh, Councillor Iona Stoddard. Do we have a yes. seconder? Second, Councillor Okay. Perhaps the clerk just wants to clarify that. Maybe I'm incorrect, but my understanding is that based on the terms of reference, the Heritage Advisory Committee members do not need to be CPED members. Uh, 
Madam Chair, through you to uh, the Councillor, that is correct. Um, I would note that where the Heritage Advisory Committee um, does report up through CPED, it could be of benefit for at least one of the councillors um, from CPED to be that representative to Heritage to form that liaison or, or linkage. Um, if there's any questions and any recommendations that are coming forward, um, but but as per the terms of reference, there is uh, no requirement, so it can be any member of council. Excellent. All right. Thank you for the clarification. Um, all right. And Councillor Lovelace, you had another nomination. Uh, yes, I was going to uh, nominate uh, Councillor Cuddle um, to the Heritage Advisory Committee if she is interested. All right, Councillor Cuddle, how are you feeling about that? I would be interested. Thank you very much, Councillor Lovelace. Excellent. All right, so we have two nominations on the floor there. Uh, Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Ms. Chair. Um, that was actually going to be my exact question was whether Councillor Cuddle was interested. Since I've already had a turn on it, uh, more than happy to have Cuddle be our re representative from CPIT. I do think it's important that someone from this committee is on the Heritage Advisory, and so uh, I'm more than happy to have Councillor Cuddle uh, take my spot there. All right, excellent. Um, do we have any other nominations from the floor? Any further nominations from the floor? Any further nominations from the floor? Seeing no further nominations from the floor, looking for a motion to close nominations. I so move, Madam Chair. Moved by Councillor Lovelace. Do we have a seconder? I'll second it. Councillor Seconded Austin. by Councillor Austin. Excellent. So then uh, it would appear that uh, before us is the recommendation that Councillor Stoddard and Councillor Cuddle uh, serve on the Heritage Advisory Committee for a term to November of 2022. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I do want to post to close the nominations first. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought I did that. Um, yes, if I'm keeping track, I think the uh, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, through you to uh, the committee. Uh, if I'm keeping track, I believe the nominations for that have closed. Uh, there is the um, uh, the one remaining um, uh, item regarding uh, uh, nominations to CDAC. And uh, following that at that time, we can we can read the uh, the entire motion. Um, uh, if that makes sense in terms of keeping gotcha. track of the uh, the format. Makes sense. All right. Um, so then uh, number three, chair or a designate from CPED to the Community Design Advisory Committee. Uh, is there anyone who has a nomination for uh, service to the Community Design Advisory Committee? And Sam, do, uh, Sam Austin, do you have a question? Yeah, uh, I, this came up at, a, at Environment. Um, I'm wondering if the clerk can clarify um, if, if memory serves, the regional center councillors are automatically on the committee. Madam Chair, through you to the councillor, uh, Phoebe Wright, Deputy Clerk. That is correct. Um, so the councillors representing districts um, seven, eight, and five are automatically on uh, CDAC as uh, their districts are in the regional center. Um, so Councillor Mason, Smith and Austin are uh, are already on uh, CPED, or sorry, on C-D-A-C, to me acronyms. On CDAC, okay. all right. So, so just, I, I would throw it out to Councillor Cuddle and Councillor Lovelace that it indicated an interest in this committee um, if they want to, uh, I, I'm happy, or Councillor Smith, I'm sure would be too, since we're going to be there anyway, um, to be the CDAC representative. If there isn't an interest, it is very regional center or oriented. But if either of them uh, have an interest in serving on that, I mean, I think that would, well, you know, we, we, we have the place. All right. Uh, so, Councillor Lovelace, are, are you interested in uh, in serving, uh, being the representative to the Community Design Advisory Committee? Uh, yes, I'm just clarifying, though, that um, the regional plan review, um, uh, you know, it, within the terms of reference of the of the CDAC committee um, has uh, a role. Um, so I just wanted to confirm that the CDAC is not just about um, center plan. 
uh, but that the regional plan um, is also uh, a significant work for this committee. All right. Uh, uh, Phoebe, are you able to answer that question? I, I, that's a good question. I might defer to Councillor Austin. He might know better than I do. <laughs> I, my understanding was that CDAC was specific to the center plan, but um, Councillor Austin might know better than I do. <laughs> my apologies. All right. No worries. Sure. Uh, Sam, can you shed some light on that? I can shed partial light, not complete clarity on it. Um, it, it the CDAC did start off, it, its original starting place was as the regional plan review um, back in the day. And uh, it, it then became all about the center plan and that's where it's been since. And it's been a bit of an open question um, to my mind uh, as to whether or not the committee continues after the center plan is done, or you know what we're going to do with the regional plan review and how CTAC um, fits in. So um, I don't think it, at least it, it, when it's when it's come up before, I, I don't have the sense that it's settled as to whether or not it will be that regional plan committee in the way it was before. Okay, that I wish to nominate Councillor Cuddle um, to sit on this committee. Yeah, I gladly accept the nomination. Thank you, Councillor Lovelace. All right, excellent. Uh, any further nominations? Uh, or oh, sorry, I guess uh, we need a seconder for that. A seconder for Councillor Cuddle to serve on CDAC. I'll second it. Trish. Seconded by Councillor Purdy. Thank you very much. Um, any further nominations? Any further nominations? Sorry, sorry, Chair, really quick. Do we have to, we have to nominate two? Uh, no, I think just one. Okay, all right. Cool. Yeah, just one to CDAC. There were yeah. two to Heritage Advisory, but just one to CDAC. All right, sounds good. Uh, any, uh, any further nominations from the floor? And third and final, any further nominations from the floor? Seeing none, I ask that the uh, nominations, uh, or the closed nominations, motion to close nominations. I so. So moved by Councillor Lovelace, seconded by. I'll second that, Councillor right. Cuddle. Seconded by Councillor Cuddle. Perfect. Uh, so it looks like we have a full a full motion here that we can pass as one. So um, looking for a member to uh, pa uh, pass the motion uh, that's uh, at 12.1.3 and uh, we'll uh, move that motion with the, the names filled in. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, Councillor Iona Stoddard, um, or sorry, I'm uh, I'm my name is uh, next to Executive Standing Committee, uh, Councillor Stoddard and Councillor Cuddle for Heritage Advisory Committee, and Councillor Cuddle for the Community Design Advisory Committee. Uh, looking for someone to move that motion. I'll move it. Oh. Oh, no, go ahead. Who is okay. that, Councillor Cuddle? Trish. Uh, Purdy. Oh, sorry. Okay, Councillor Purdy. Moved by Councillor Purdy, seconded by Councillor Austin. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Seeing none opposed. All right, perfect. So, uh, Councillor Iona Stoddard will uh, be at the Heritage Advisory Committee. Councillor uh, Cuddle will be at Heritage Advisory and Community Design Advisory Committee, and I'll be at Economic Development, uh, or sorry, at the uh, Executive Standing Committee. Whew. All right. Uh, members of Standing Committee reports 12.2. We have none. 12.3, Community Design Advisory Committee. We have none. Heritage Advisory Committee. We have none. Uh, and we have no motions. Um, item 14.1. And uh, just wondering, do we uh, need to go in camera for this or can we deal with this uh, uh, in uh, open session? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through you to the committee, uh, we uh, should uh, retire into the in camera for uh, this portion of the, uh, the meeting. Uh, I believe that has been sent to uh, all members via their um, uh, counselor appointments. All right, excellent. So uh, I guess looking for a motion to go in camera move to go in camera thank you madam chair all right we have uh, moved to go in camera councillor lovelace thank you very much we shall uh, go in camera so we'll 
uh, we'll exit out of this meeting and we will see you uh, in a couple of seconds over in the in-camera meeting. So uh, we'll see you shortly. Thank you.
I see we're back into the meeting, but I'm not uh, I'm not getting any audio. Maybe that's because everyone is on mute, but anybody? Yep. Can Hello. Hear you. We're here. Perfect. All right. And just a quick check at the clerk's office. Everybody made the leap? Uh, yes, I believe we are all good. All right, excellent. So uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, back from in camera, and we do have a motion to pass as a result of our in camera session. Uh, looking to a committee member to uh, put a motion on the floor. And this would be a motion to uh, accept uh, the uh, five members of the uh, the public to be appointed to the Heritage Advisory Committee. I can make that motion. All right. Councillor Cuddle. Um, I would like to make a motion to accept the five nominations to the Heritage Advisory Committee for the members at large. All right, and uh, also accept the, uh, I believe, five alternate names as well that were chosen. And to accept the five alternate names that were chosen. All right, does that work for you, uh, Mr. Clerk? Uh, yes, uh, I uh, I can actually uh, circulate just a ratification motion that's uh, even even more general. It just says uh, and, uh, ratify the recommendations. Uh, yep. All right. I'll so, uh, uh, sorry, who was the seconder? Lovelace. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Lovelace. So we have uh, we have a mover and we have a seconder. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, so that was item 14.1, 15. We have no added items. Uh, item 16, do we have any notices of motion from committee members? No, seeing none. Uh, public participation. Uh, any members of the public who uh, wish to speak? I didn't know that we were uh, wired for that today, but uh, I guess we are. Um, yeah, seeing none. Um, all right, then the date of our next meeting is January 21st, 2021. Uh, thank you all so much for uh, for your patience as, as I clunk my way through this, but uh, uh, I promise things will be smoother uh, in January. Uh, looking for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Thank you. This was great. Thank you very much. You guys, uh, we did some good work here today. Appreciate that. Uh, take care and we will uh, see you all later. Thank you. Bye-bye.